I wanted to get into a story before this hour ends about an Idaho state legislator who is, uh, well, media doesn't like him because he's not a he's not a liberal and he's not even a moderate, as they like to call them in mainstream media. What they mean is someone who's a lot like us, like a liberal. He's not even a moderate Republican, and he's taking some heat from uh, media across the state today. But when you hear his story, you may actually, if you apply some logic to it, you'll say, that makes sense. So why is he taking the media beating? Because for the same reason Donald Trump takes media beatings, they don't like him. And no matter what he does, they're going to beat on him for anything that happens. I bring that up because he's not alone in being being attacked by media in recent, I'll say recent weeks. Actually, in the last week, there was a U.S. congressman who was always known as being a fairly standard conservative from Iowa. His name is Steve King. Steve King made a comment the other day, uh, sent out a tweet, where he talked about defending our culture. And he said that we wouldn't have to bring other people's babies here if we defended our own culture. And the the Twitterverse and uh, the fellow travelers, they just erupted, calling him a racist and, and just saying that, you know, your culture is no better than anybody else's culture. You know, we need more people getting burned in cages, and we need more people getting beheaded, and we need more women getting stoned so we can be a lot like those other cultures. You conservative Christians are just bad and evil. So King has been hearing about this for days now. But here's something that I think is unique in American politics. He's not groveling and saying, I'm sorry for having said it. Paul Ryan, his fellow Republican in the House of Representatives, has already condemned him. Uh, Ryan, one of those typical guys, walking around, wetting an index finger, putting it into the air, and seeing which way the political wind is blowing, and saying, hmm, well, I guess I have to satisfy the editorial writers of America today. Oh, my colleague and fellow Republican is uh, a dirtbag. Yes, I've said it. Thank you so much. Now you may praise me and pat me atop the head. Eight minutes after 9 o'clock. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310. KLIX and NewsRadio1310.com. It's 39. At no point did Congressman King say black people or brown people or yellow people are inferior or red people. They're not. And he never said anything of the sort. He didn't use any disparaging words. He didn't call Islam evil. He didn't call uh, Judaism evil. He didn't call Taoism evil. And yet he's being attacked as being some sort of modern racist. Even the Washington Examiner, which is a conservative publication, said yesterday he's looking to be the leader of the white nationalist movement in America. This is the man speaking with Tucker Carlson on Fox News. Take a listen. This is about two minutes in length. I know it's long. But I think that you need to make up your own mind about Congressman King without having all of your media intermediaries telling you what you need to think. And so we're at this place now in America where we're seeing people marching in the streets that are pushing back against the American culture and the American civilization. And it's troubling to me that over the last 25 years, we've essentially phased out the, the promotion of assimilation and we promoted instead multiculturalism and diversity as if it were our strength. And in fact, they're using it now to divide us. And that's what Barack Obama did throughout his presidency. Everything you said, I, I think, is defensible and probably right. The problem with the tweet was that it suggested there's a racial component to American identity. Do you think that there is? Well, there's a racial component to all of our discussion here in America, and there, there must be that because the left is constantly pointing to the differences we have and race, ethnicity, national origin, sexual orientation, prosperity uh, and poverty versus versus poverty, but I'll say this, that we are all God's children. We are all created in his image. And, and America has been the most successful nation in merging these distinctions together right. on the common foundation of rights that come from God. What I should have done, Tucker, if I had more characters in that tweet, just added, we can't, you can't rebuild our civilization with somebody else's babies unless we adopt them. So the idea is it doesn't matter what ethnic group the people come from as long as they share the same culture and language and shared history. Is that what you, I don't want to lead you to that, but is that what you're saying or not? No, that's, 
That, that is what I'm saying. It's, if, we're, if we're bound together by those, and, and by the way, language is the most powerful unifying force known throughout all of history, the, the, a common, having a common language. If we right. share those things, then we can communicate with each other. We can do it instinctively. And on top of that, English is essentially a carrier of liberty, and it expresses freedom and liberty more effectively than any other language right. on the planet. We're so fortunate to have English, our common language. Now, Tucker said, well, it seemed to suggest a, a, suggested a racial component. But again, he didn't use any words, bad words, or even mention people's skin color or anything along those lines. And then he was just talking about English. And we have brought this up before. I had a woman at a Spanish organization tell me one time, they served a Spanish-speaking population, that language was culture. It is. And the English language, we have brought this up before, is the language of the Age of Enlightenment. It is the language of the Protestant Reformation. These things led to the idea that men could be, could 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 have a personal relationship with God. That the king wasn't more special than they were. It helped create the United States of America. It's our founding documents. If we had been Polish speakers or Bulgarian, well, Bulgar, or if we had spoke uh, we had spoke Italian or Spanish, we wouldn't have the things that we have today. So where is this man wrong? in bringing all of this up. And if we hadn't killed 70 million of our own babies since Roe v. Wade was legalized, why would we need to be bringing all of these other people here in the first place? Telephone number to reach our show, 736-0300. 736-0300. You're listening to Bill Colley on Top Story, and you're up next. Well, this is the thing. You know, in our society anymore, nobody listens. And uh, I make it a point, as best as I can, to shut my mouth, even though that may sound unbelievable, and listen <laughs> to people. And uh, because everybody has an opinion, and a lot of times people have insights that you would never expect from them. And what Steve King said was as logical and as fair and honest as you could believe. But you see, when we allow these pundits to tell us what somebody else said and what to think, and we're willing to do it because, let's face it, in this society, some of sections of this society are so damn lazy that it's you and I work hard. We have no idea just how miserably worthless some of these people are. And, uh, you know, let's face it, it's a terrible shame, but they're here. And uh, somehow, I don't know if you're going to change them, but some sort of crisis is going to have to change in their life for them to change the way they live their life. I'll hang up, Bill. Hey, thank you much for the telephone call. Congressman King is saying essentially what a great many working Americans have believed for a very, very long time. There is something special about our culture, and it's worth defending. I keep bringing this up almost daily. Lefty says, Lefty wants you to believe that all cultures are equal except for ours, and that our culture is somehow deformed, depraved, and, and despicable, and we need to shelve it. And this notion that, well, if we only had more diversity, we would be stronger. Nobody, all of those lefties out there who talk about settled science and they promote science and the need for science, they have no evidence that diversity makes us stronger. It's just a, a bromide. It's a slogan that has no basis. And yet, as long as it backs up what they want, They'll use it, no matter how it runs counter to their arguments about science. 915, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310. KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. We're at 36. We have another caller with us. Caller, you're on the air. Good morning, Bill. You know, I'm glad you played that because you don't, I didn't hear anything really wrong. He was stating us some facts, and here's some more. When the United States of America stopped immigration for a lot of years, it was for the fact that we had so much immigration that they weren't assimilating, which means that we didn't, it doesn't mean that we wanted them to get rid of their language or anything else. It just means that they wanted them to become one as Americans. It didn't matter as skin color. But the fact is, is when we're all speaking different languages, we will always be separated. If we can speak one language and communicate together, 
we can solve a lot of problems, and we can become a strong America, which is why they did it. And then they reopened up immigration, and, and we're at that point again where we need to do it again. Well, and I, I find it interesting, and thank you for the call. The other day I was, I have satellite radio in the car. I wasn't going to keep it. It competes with me. I'm, I'm not big on uh, uh, keeping a competitor in my own. But, but there are things I found that I wanted here, and I had a special where I could get it for a year, so I did. And I'm driving down the road, and I flipped on this channel, which is, I've been flipping around. I got to listen to Bluegrass yesterday. Wonderful. But I was listening to this channel it's about storytelling. It comes from public radio. It's about storytelling. And the fact of the matter is, is the guy was complaining there was this linguist, and he was complaining that if you go to certain Pacific Islands, people will speak a different language sometimes in each individual village. And he was mentioning that that harms our cooperation as human beings. But then he said it looks as if we're going to have one homogenous language that will develop over the next several centuries and it's going to be English. And then he started bemoaning the fact that we are losing all of this cultural diversity. Well, he just said that we get along better when we all speak the same language. He just doesn't want it to be English for some apparent reason. 736-0300, our telephone number. You're up next. You're on the air with Bill Colley. Hey, Bill. These uh, U.N. budget cuts they just announced will really help all of this stuff, you know? Well, and if they can pass it, it's 50%, as I understand, you're going to yeah. have the Paul Ryans and the Mitch McConnells, and you're going to have Lindsey Graham and John McCain saying, we have to give all of our tax money away, and they'll join the Democrats, and it won't fly. It won't fly. Well, it's too bad. You know, they could have returned those 3,000 brand-new MRAPs Obama had delivered to Italy in the last few months that they're just putting together. You know, we could use those on the American border down here. 3,000 brand-new ones just delivered to Italy. <laughs> Well, and thank you for the call. It's just it's a it's a shame that we've had to get to this point. You you talk about thinking you have to take care of the rest of the world before you take care of yourselves. CTV, which is uh, independent television in Canada, unlike CBC, which is the uh, government broadcasting and controlled by the liberal government, there has a story. I saw it last night. Canadian retirees who can no longer they have to make a choice between feeding themselves. Or, or, or heat in their homes, or electricity in their homes, and they're left to their own devices. These are people who've worked all of their lives, they're now retired, but they're now strapped for cash. They can't afford, they've got to make that choice between utilities and between eating. Meanwhile, the communist prime minister, I mean the liberal prime minister, Justin Trudeau, is giving new Muslim immigrants and migrants $43,000 a year to get their lives started. Now, with the exchange rate, I don't know what it is right now, but even if it was only $35,000, who out there wouldn't want thirty-five grand? Yet he can't care for his own people, but in the name of diversity, which he claims makes his country stronger, they have to import people who eventually want to establish a new caliphate there. So the old folks, you're going to have to starve or freeze to death so that we can pat ourselves on the backs and say, ah, oh, Look how good we are when it comes to diversity. The United Nations is much the same. It's a complete waste of time and effort, and we've got to stop bankrolling it. 920, 38, Bill Colley with you on Top Story. I hope I'm not one of those people, uh, well, I don't plan to move to Canada in the first place. Well, maybe if Hillary had been elected, I would have done like the liberals and left. Oh, wait, they didn't. Uh, but I don't plan to freeze in the dark when I'm retired. Actually, if you... Plan correctly. You don't have to worry about those things. Speaking of planning, why not call the folks at Waddell and Reed here in Twin Falls or drop in and schedule an appointment? Waddell and Reed has been in business now since 1937. Let me say this. Any business that manages to be around 80 years is doing something right. One of the oldest firms in the country to offer mutual funds, and in fact, Waddell and Reed owns and manages two mutual fund families, Investing is done by a conservative nature. And I wanted to point out, too, as well, there's very much a planning approach to what they're doing. They're going to sit down with you as an individual and talk about each piece of the puzzle and what your expectations are. Waddell and Reed will build a plan around your needs and your goals, and Waddell and Reed will help you manage money. And at Waddell and Reed, they take planning personally. 923, Bill Colley with you this morning on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX. 
at NewsRadio1310.com. We're at 38. I know it's hard to believe when we're saying 38 and we're after 9 o'clock in the morning, but we are on our way to a high temperature today again near 70. I think we hit, according to my uh, thermometer yesterday afternoon, we hit 71, uh, which felt great. And just to point out, weather is brought to you by, it's a service of, here on News Radio 1310 KLIX and NewsRadio1310.com of Mountain Home Auto Ranch. I was talking about Steve King, and, and he actually took a little heat off President Trump this week. Nothing that Trump does will ever please the mainstream media, and nothing that Steve King will ever do will please the mainstream media, because these people are talking about traditional American values. In Idaho, we have people who are in the same boat when it comes to coverage by media in this state. This is a story from the Associated Press. An eastern Idaho lawmaker says he doesn't remember saying that there are teachers in school districts, quote, clearly overpaid, unquote, while his microphone was still on when the House floor was at ease. Representative Ron Nate, a Republican from Rexburg, declined to clarify. In other words, they wanted to give him an anal probe. His statement when asked by the Associated Press on Tuesday. Nate said he knew his microphone was turned on, but added he often doesn't remember the details of recent conversations. In other words, the AP wants you to think, ah, Ron Nate's gone a little senile there. Yeah, you know, you folks over there in uh, Rexburg, you shouldn't be voting for him. we got a couple of liberal candidates here on the shelf. I'll tell you what, we here in media like them because, number one, they aren't straight men like Ron Nate, and uh, number two, they aren't Republicans, and number three, well, you know, uh, they don't go... Well, Ron Nate won't go around hugging the local Islamists, and these people will. So, you know, you need to vote for them instead. And then the writer says, Before going at ease, Nate had argued against a budget appropriation proposal that would add $2 million for counseling services in public schools because he argued that money could be spent to hire more teachers. What did Ron Nate, if, if he indeed said, said I, he's making casual conversation, and he said some people are clearly overpaid, and media is now... They've tied him up, they've got him over the coals, and they're spinning him round and round and round. Why is that? Well, here, here's a thought. I don't know how many teachers there are in the state of Idaho. Let's pull any number out of the air and say 8,000. But you know even if you're in a workplace that only has 80 or 8 people, you know that there are some folks who show up every day and they go above and beyond the call. They're the people who come in half an hour early and they hit the ground running, and they're self-starters. And at the end of the day, they've done sometimes two to three times the, uh, the, the volume of work that some of the other people in the office have done. You also know you have some people who come in, and they may not be the best self-starters, but once they get going, they do the job and they do it well, and they get done what they're supposed to have done by the end of the day. You also know that in any workplace setting, you have people out there. There was a story I heard years ago about a federal worker. She was uh, she was employed at an office, and they couldn't fire her because of the, uh, the the union protections. She'd come in. I think it was at a BLM office. <laughs> she'd come in and she'd close her office door and lock it, and then sleep on top of her desk all day. <laughs> then she'd leave. So there are people in some offices who are just mailing it in. No matter what you say, they're mailing it in. It happens everywhere. Now, if you have teachers who are doing that, and clearly there will be the liberal teachers out there who will be offended that anyone would imply that some aren't pulling their weight. The key word there being some. So if Ron Nate says these people are clearly overpaid, why would I pay for a teacher who just comes in and says, all right, class, there's the assignment, read it. There'll be a quiz at the end of the week. Don't bother me while I'm napping at my desk. Now, that's a, a little bit of hyperbole. It's likely they're not napping at their desks. But I had school teachers when I was growing up who were clearly mailing it in. I had some great teachers as well. The ones who were mailing it in were getting paid the same amount of money, basically, as the guy who was going above and beyond. Or the woman, if you like. Most of my teachers were women, and I think that that's likely still the case. So if he says some are clearly overpaid, he's referring to the ones who are lazy. And yes, like in any other workplace, there are some lazy people. So why is media, and it's not just the Associated Press, this was on every major Idaho website and newspaper today. 
I, I get up in the morning about 3 o'clock and I start preparing for the show. One of the first things I do is I go do a Google search on the word Idaho. And then I type in past 24 hours or last 24 hours. So I get a rundown of things that have been going on uh, during the course of the last day since I've gotten off the air. And and an idea, you know, if I want to be well informed, I have to do that. And this Ron Nate story is everywhere. Ron Nate, I should point out, is Professor Ron Nate. He's not just a member of the Idaho House of Representatives. He's Professor Ron Nate. He's no dummy. He obviously knows a little bit about money, dollars and cents, if you will. And he likely knows a little bit about efficiency. Media can't have that because he's, he's apparently, he's a, again, he's a straight man, he's a Christian, and he's not a liberal. 930. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310. I know some people who work in the newspapering business and in other news organizations who are about the laziest people I've ever come across. One of them just got hired out of state to be a spokesman for a liberal governor. Makes sense, doesn't it? One more half hour of the program coming up. Some members of the House of Representatives in Washington saying the FBI needs to put up or shut up when it comes to spying on Donald Trump. Details on the way.